Good day, this is Bruce and uh, welcome to my shop again. Um, we've got uh, a swag of things to show you here today. Uh, it, it's basically a week in the home job shop. Um, we had some pretty quiet times and then have got busier and busier over the last three weeks. Uh, and I have <coughs> some jobs that I've already uh, completed this, uh, this coming past week, some I've, be I've started and others that um, I need to, uh, to show you. Uh, with all different levels of difficulty and some of them, one of them is a, a double getter out and the others are all machining uh, of all different styles. So I'll, I'll bring the uh, camera down a bit and I'll start to show you uh, what's, what lies ahead um, and, uh, and what, what, what we need to get done. Okay, so the first, first job we've got, of one of the jobs we've got, is this little motor and the journal here has worn down. So what I'm going to do, <coughs> to, in order, if I went to the normal thing and machined back, uh, the, this, this shaft here is the same size all the way through. So if I were to, um, uh, to machine that down and put a, a sleeve on it, that wouldn't work because we've got a flat area here. And then if I put a sleeve on, then we'd have to cut that sleeve and then that sleeve wouldn't hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bronze up. I'm going to build this up with bronze and machine it back and, and do that repair. Uh, another job I just completed this morning, uh, and this is for a high amp truck for their, um, uh, high amp truck for their, <coughs> the hydraulic uh, legs that stabilize the, the, the truck. So <clears throat> this, this ball joint is what the leg uh, plays on, uh, the plate plays on, and that screws into the bottom of the piston uh, that goes down. Thing. So what they need with this, some of the trucks from time to time they come to me and they, have, uh, they need to extend the legs. So I've made these extension legs. Uh, it's M80, um, 84, uh, sorry, M86 uh, by 2 millimeter. So I've made these extenders and they will go on uh, to the bottoms and, and extend by this 120 millimeter, which is what, what I've done in the past. So that, those, those two are out of the way. Another job is I've got some shafts bigger than this coming and they're going to, um, I think I'm going to bring that camera up a fraction. Okay, that looks better. So I've got these shafts coming in, they're, they're going to be machined up. These are going off to Africa, there's five of them, and they need this uh, 16 tooth spline cut. Now I've already measured it, um, and, uh, and, I've, and I've ascertained that it's, a, it's a, a, an M3, uh, module 3, um, 16 teeth, 22 and a half degree pressure angle. So I'm going to be machining up uh, five of these uh, when, the top, when they arrive. And in order to make sure that these are, are spot on, uh, they, they, they are, they are, whatever the fitting it is, I haven't got the female. So what I've done is I've had uh, a female made wire cut that is neat to this. And that'll be used as a go gauge. And that, that'll just slide on uh, and it's quite very, very neat, as you can see. It's an extremely neat fit. And this will be my go gauge for when I go to make those five, um, uh, five splines. Um, another job to come in, there's two of these. Uh, these, are, these are shafts um, from uh, hydraulic uh, pumps. 
and the uh, journal where the bearing sat was, was worn out, so I machined, uh, machined that journal down and made a bush and fitted the bush on. I've also uh, cut a new keyway in here because the existing keyway was in a, it was in a bad way. See that there? The keyway was in pretty bad way. So I've, I've done two of those. Now that's one. This is a different size. Same deal. Uh, flogged out, so I've cut a new keyway. So those, those are ready for delivery on Monday morning. Another job, this one I farmed out. I've got somebody else to do it. But these are plugs. Uh, that had to be made up out of uh, aluminium, not aluminium, but aluminium. And uh, I've, uh, I've had 30 of those made. So that's a quick production on the CNC, and I need to pass those on to the client on Monday. Another job that's come in, there's two of them, uh, these clamping arrangements, it's from oil and gas, and there's a, uh, in that blue spot there you can see, there's a... Um, a broken, um, a broken uh, thread, and it's it's that size. I haven't measured it as yet, but it's quite small, and I'm going to have to. And that's a getter out. I've got two of those to do, um, so that's another job for the uh, coming up. Now, uh, the uh, I got a, a I got a call from uh, uh, from one of my clients that they they a, a part a crank a crank arm from <coughs> a commercial printing press had broken and they were sending it down from Broome and Broome is uh, uh, 2300 kilometers from here about 1500 miles uh, and they're sending it down uh, for me to make a new one so a box of goodies came in and all oily and greasy and so forth and I'll walk you through what I'm going to do how I'm going to go about uh, making this um, uh, a uh, new crank out of steel rather than cast iron. Uh, and uh, so I'll bring the camera down onto the table here and I'll show you, uh, show you all that. Okay, so these are the two halves um, of, of this crank arm. And, uh, and you can see, so they, that's, that, that's the crank arm, and that's got, uh, it got broken off, uh, broken, broken in half. So what I've, what I've done is I've set it up this morning, and I drilled the hole through and, and tapped the hole in here so that I could bolt the thing together to get some measurements. Prior to doing that, um, yesterday, I um, once this arrived, I made up this sketch uh, and I sent it off to uh, my uh, uh, steel supplier and, um, and he has a, a water jet cutter. So he cut this, bl this blank out from, with the water jet, but of course it's a much thicker than this one. <coughs> and I wasn't 100% sure, sure of the centre distances between, um, bet between the two, uh, uh, two holes. So I, I did a roughie as best I could, sent that drawing through, and, he, and he, a water jet cut of this. So that, that's got the most of the, the, the shape into it, but of course it's a lot thicker and so forth. So the new, the, the new one that I'm going to be machining will end up being like this. And of course, it's got to have facets machined out here. Uh, the same on the other side. Both of the holes bored out to uh, accurately, and the keyway cut. I just did a uh, what's uncut. So what I did, uh, in order to be able to find the centres quickly, I've, um, I've I've gone along and done such. I've I've machined up uh, the end of a shaft with a point on it, and same with a smaller one um, and then what what we've done is I put that over the shaft there like so and introduce this screw now this one this one's not a problem this one 
fits in there okay. Um, fit that screw in that I uh, that I uh, that I made the uh, thread with. So that's just holding on to that fella there, and <coughs> this allowed me to just do a quick pick up from that centre point to the other centre point of the shaft and I can see that that confirms it's 80, 86 millimetres so um, I thought it was about and now I've now changed that to show that that's 80, 86 millimetres here um, I thought it was about 87 I wasn't sure now I know so now I'm going to be able to set up that large, this large block here and it'll be <coughs> continuing uh, videos throughout on making this crank arm work for um, and, and they can, so they can send it back. Now in the box of things they sent down here and without any explanation there's a shaft and it looks like it's broken off on the end. There's another piece of a shaft here that's in terrible state. Um, we're not, I'm not sure about that. Uh, there's no explanation. There's a series of studs that seem to be broken off as well. Um, there's another stud here. So it looks like there's, a, oh, there's another piece of a shaft here. So it looks like there's a fair bit that's going to keep me occupied um, to, to make all this and, and so this is the beginning and we'll just carry on as we go, we'll uh, yeah, I'll get down here. <laughs> and the other thing is, at the same time, don't forget, <coughs> these are my, um, my gear indicators and they've had some pretty good feedback, they're available for sale, um, all you have to do is to um, uh, get onto my uh, website or onto or send me an email is probably the best thing to do. Send me an email uh, to uh, Bruce get her out at uh, gmail.com and uh, they are um, they have different prices for Australia and for the rest of the world depending on um, uh, the uh, the currency and where we're selling them, they're, they're pretty uh, pretty smicko and I've got some more in the pipeline for metric as well. So there you have it and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back with a continuation. Thanks for watching. <laughs>